Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cubase Secrets. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the most effective ways to time correct multi-track drum recordings in Cubase. It's going to be loads of fun, super easy. Let's get started. Time correcting multi-track acoustic drums is a very standard procedure when it comes to music production. Sometimes you might want to fix mistakes, obviously, but sometimes even if you have a really amazing drummer, you might want to tighten the performance even more because the style of music, the genre dictates this. So it's not only about correcting mistakes. So what I'm going to show you here is how you can do this in Cubase effectively, fast, so you can time correct an entire drum performance really quickly. So what I have here is a multi mic drum performance, multiple microphones, and we're going to try and correct it. We have some mistakes here. We have some inconsistencies. Let's have a listen. I'm going to play it with a metronome. So as you can hear, there are some tiny mistakes. Uh, also, it's not exactly tight. It's not, it flams a little bit with the metronome. And let's go here at the ending. So I'm going to show you how to correct all this and it's going to be very easy. I know that many people when they have to do this, they panic and they feel a little bit of uncomfortable, but trust me, it's going to be very simple and I'm going to show you how to do this. Let's take it step by step. The first thing I would suggest you try and make sure of is that all your tracks, all your audio events have the exact same length. So if, for example, one of the events is shorter, what I would suggest is grabbing your range selection tool, making sure you have a selection that is exactly the same like all the other tracks above it. And then I would just go to audio, bound selection, and hit replace. And now Cubase has created a new file that has the exact same length like all the tracks above. But realistically, most of the times, if you have a multi-track drum performance, the lengths are going to match because most of the times you hit start and stop recording at the same time. Let's go to step number two. I want to select all the channels. So I'm going to hit on my first channel, which is my kick drum, and then I'm going to hit shift on my keyboard and select the last channel, which is my ambient channel, like this. The next thing I want to do is I want to place these channels inside a folder. And in order to do this, you just right click and you select move selected tracks to new folder. Or in my case, I have a shortcut command shift F. There we go. Now I have all my drums inside this folder. I'm going to rename this folder just because let's keep this neat. And I'm going to change the color to red because my drums are red. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that these two buttons here are activated. The first one is group editing. And what this will do is basically it allows us to edit all the channels at once by just editing one single channel. For example, if I delete this portion right here, you will see it happens on all the channels. If I move something, let's say I move this one, it moves all the channels at the same time. So this is very, very important. The next thing we need to activate is the phase coherent audio warp because we're going to use audio warp in this case. Now, this is very important because this will retain the phase of all the different microphones in relation to each other. If you don't activate this, you might get some phasing issues and, you know, it might not sound so good. Now, if you don't want to time correct a multi mic recording that was recorded with multiple microphones at the same time, you don't need to use this. But in this case, because it's a multi mic recording, I'm going to activate it. It's crucial. Now, once I've done this, I can start correcting my drum kit. And let me show you a little bit of the method that I use and the philosophy. It's very easy and you can time correct an entire performance super fast. So what I like to do is I like to take the kick drum and the snare as my reference. These are the main elements that we can time correct and we can kind of make sure that every other element is going to fall into place. So let's start from the beginning. Let's see how this sounds. I'm going to have the metronome on so that we can hear what's going on. Okay, so to begin with, this is not very tight. As you can see, 
these kick drums are not falling exactly on the beat. And I would assume that if there was a bass player here, they would try to hit all the notes exactly on the beat. So these two instruments have to lock with each other. So I would start with this first. What we need to do is we need to grab our time warp tool, free warp. If yours is not like this, make sure you go here, click and hold and then select free warp. So now I'm going to start creating warp points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go here and as you can see, Cubase very intelligently snaps to the transients. So if I hover my mouse, see, it snaps. It's very, very easy to define a transient, so you don't go hunting. Just make sure you have snap activated so that this happens, and that's going to make your life so much easier. So now I'm going to create my first audio warp point. So I'm going to click on this first kick drum hit, and I'm actually going to create hit points for all these hits. So I'm going to go here, and before I time correct anything, I'm going to see if this solves the problem. So the next thing I can do is I can start correcting these audio warp points. So if I want, I can do this manually like this. As you can see, it snaps to bar number two, and this one should snap or bar number one. And as you can see, these are already much better now. But let's say I want to lock them exactly on the grid. So I'm going to create hit points for all of them. And now what I'm gonna do to make things easier, I'm going to hit Q. So now we have all these five kick drums time corrected. Let's have a listen. Now, if I want to correct these snares as well, if I want them to be exactly on the beat, I can do the same thing here. I can just create my warp points and then I can hit Q. As you can see, I have a quantized value of 16th notes and this works great. And now let's listen to these time-corrected snares as well. So that's a clear mistake. Now let me keep doing this procedure so that you can hear how I'm going to treat this section that comes right here at bar four that has a mistake, that has a timing problem, a real timing problem. So let's keep going. Okay, this I can correct it a little bit. This one as well. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a hit point and hitting Q. Okay, so this is clearly a mistake. I'm going to correct this snare drum here that's very close to being correct. So. Okay, this kick drum, I can fix it. Yeah, so this kick drum is definitely a little bit early, so it was rushed. Let's try and correct this. I'm going to correct the snare first. Already, you can tell that by correcting the snare, the kick drum is already a little bit better. So now what I can do is add another warp point there and hit Q. And that's much better. Let's listen again. And now I can keep going like this and you can be as granular as you want or as coarse as you want. In my opinion, you have to decide for yourself how tight you want your drum performance to be or how much of the human element you wanna keep. As a general rule of thumb, if you correct the kick drums and the snares, you should be at a very good starting point, at least for regular drum patterns. But then if you want to fix a tom feel, for example, we're going to do this in a second, of course you can be more granular and then you might also want to go into the tom channels and create your war points right there. For example, let's go here and let's tighten this section here where we have this tom fill. So I'm going to fix everything before this. And here is the tom fill. And for this case, I like to go with the overheads because I can see all the tom hits very clearly. But before I start correcting the toms, I'm going to correct this kick drum here after the tom fill. And most of the times things will fall into place when you correct this. So I'm going to correct this one and let's see. Okay, that sounds good already, but I can make it a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna go here and add hit points on my overheads. 
and now I'm going to hit Q. And now it's perfectly on the grid. Like I said, I wouldn't normally do this. In this case, I would just leave it with some human touch because if you do this, then it sounds a little bit sterile. It sounds a little bit mechanical. So as long as my kick drum falls in the right place, I can let the toms be and have a little bit of imperfection. Now let's go and fix a problem at the end of the track. Let's listen to this. Okay, this Ralentando, I don't think it's very tasteful. So let's try and fix this. Again, the first thing I will fix is the downbeat. And this is where my kick drum falls. And the kick drum should fall on bar 18 in this case. Okay, perfect. Now let's see up to which point our drummer was in time. Okay, I think we can safely say that this is correct. So let's correct this snare here. I'm going to correct this one as well. And now I'm going to correct this downbeat. This kick drum should fall on bar 18. But in this case, I'm not going to hit Q for quantize because this is so late that it would take this kick drum and place it, let me hit Q so you can see, even later. So in this case, I'm going to do this manually. I'm going to take my kick drum and correct this, set it to bar 18. And now let's listen. And now all we need to do is be a little bit more granular so we can correct this portion here. I'm going to find the main points and I'm going to correct those first. So these are all 16th notes. So I'm going to correct this one. I'm going to correct this one, this one, and this one. These are my kick drums again. And let's see how it sounds now. And it's actually quite better. Now this is a little bit of a problem. So let's try and fix this. I need to be a little bit more granular here. So I'm going to add an audio warp point here at my floor tom. Hit Q and let's see what Quantize did. And now I think I need to fix this one as well. So as you can see, I have a nice defined transient here. I'm going to click on this and I'm gonna hit Q. And let's see. And there you go. That was completely wrong previously, but now... And if I want, I can be even more granular. I can go here to my overheads and start quantizing these sections here. As you can see, we have all these beautiful transients to play with. Let's play it. So I can make this last drum feel that was quite wrong, very tight, and I can be as analytical as I want or I can be as loose as I want. So don't forget, transients are your friends. If you have a transient right here, you know, and it's really strong, use this transient, add a warp point here. If I have a transient here, add a warp point here and I can just hit Q. Same with this one. Now I'm making this even more tight, see? So wherever I find a good defined transient, this is what I choose to use for my reference. <music> Fixed. So there you go. This is the method that you can use to time correct multi-track acoustic drum performances. It's actually quite enjoyable. I really enjoy doing this. It's uh, actually quite creative because it really gives you the freedom to choose when you're going to have a more loose feel or where you're going to be very tight. And especially for pop music and modern rock music or metal music, this is extremely important. Especially for some metal genres, this procedure is really critical to get a very tight sound because then you have all the bass, the guitars, all the elements falling exactly as a sharp knife into place. And as you can see, it's very easy even if you have a kind of mediocre drum performance. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also let us know in the comments down below what you'd like to see next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.
Bye-bye.